Channel 6. From the area's news leader, WDAY. This is the news with Marv Bossert, John Wheeler, and Ed Schultz. Good evening, everyone. The formal survey comes tomorrow night after North Dakota voters go to the polls. Tonight, we have results of our informal telephone survey on measure number two. 228 of you called in to let us know how you feel about an income tax increase to help balance the state budget. 151 of you said you are in favor of the increase. 77 of you said you are against the tax increase. Again, this is, of course, an informal, unscientific survey. The real test will come tomorrow. In her special election series this week, Karen Allsaker has been reporting on the impact of tomorrow's vote. Tonight in the final report of her series, more on what you think about the issue and how some of you plan to vote. I think they're high enough, and I'm going to vote no. Any uh, other uh, tax is just uh, rubbing the people the wrong way. They're overtaxed now. Ever since the governor announced the special election, polls have shown that measure number two will not pass. Only a few of the people we talked with today say a tax hike is needed. I just think it's real important for the schools. Most people say they're not sure how they're going to vote or they don't care. The way the ballot reads, a no vote means you are opposed to a tax increase and a yes vote means you are in favor of such an increase. The other measure on the ballot, measure number one, concerns a constitutional amendment. It would make July 1st the effective date for all tax and appropriation bills passed by the legislature. At present, laws can become effective 90 days after the law is filed. From the start, legislators have known that if put to a vote of the people, raising the state's income tax would be an uphill battle. And even though it appears that the referral could fail, many legislators are still optimistic that it will pass. It's expecting a lot of the people to walk into a ballot box and say, yes, you can increase my tax by this much. But I have absolute confidence in the people of North Dakota that they're going to do it. Karen Allsaker, New Center 6. And this reminder, the polls open tomorrow morning at 7. They close tomorrow night at 8. An explosion and fire has destroyed a junior high school in Morgantown, North Carolina tonight. There are no reports of injuries yet. Authorities say the blast happened while a basketball game was being played in a gymnasium next to the school. In fact, the gym doors were blown off by the force of the explosion. Officials say the explosion may have happened in a science laboratory. A hockey school planned for this summer is the center of a major controversy in the city of Moorhead. The city council says the school can't be held unless new equipment is installed at the Moorhead Sports Center. The problem is those running the school are advertising it already. In fact, nearly 50 youngsters are signed up. As Austin Shower reports tonight, city officials are trying to work out the problems, but time is not on their side. As the ice thawed inside the Moorhead Sports Center, the controversy outside this facility heated up. Moorhead hockey coach Terry Cullen has already sent out 1,100 applications, inviting players to his hockey school in June. Cullen has lined up the coaches, met with attorneys and insurance people. But he does not have access to the sports center yet. He says he went ahead with plans for the school because he was told to by city officials. We were given the word to go ahead and proceed with our hockey school, and we did just that. We proceeded with our hockey school. And but city officials say there's been a major breakdown in communication. They say Colin jumped the gun and was only hoping to have this facility this summer. A just-released study shows the sports center is being damaged by too much moisture, and dehumidifying equipment at a cost of roughly $75,000 is needed, summer or winter. Councilmember Martin Pigney believes it would be better to delay the hockey school of summer and not try to rush the new equipment in. I don't have a problem, per se, of, of rushing into it, but I, I just seen too many of these rush jobs that we wind up with egg all over us afterwards. So. Pigney says concerns for the building are more important than the hockey school, although he says the city will try to work things out. The burden now lands on city manager Bob Erickson who will approach the school district, Concordia, and Moorhead's Youth Hockey Association to help share in the cost of the dehumidification system. If that can be worked out, then it's a race against the clock to get the system in before the hockey school begins in June. Austin Shower, New Center 6. In Washington tonight, sources say a tentative deal has been worked out regarding immunity for two key figures in the Iran arms scandal. The arrangement would delay public testimony by former National Security Advisor John Poindexter and Oliver North. They would be granted limited immunity from prosecution prior to their testimony in June. 
Poindexter raised a few tempers on Capitol Hill today. He had been called to testify about computer security. Instead, he repeatedly pleaded the Fifth Amendment. The House of Representatives amended its rules in the wake of the McCarthy hearings of the 1950s to prevent a congressional hearing from degenerating into a public spectacle, the sole purpose of which is to force an individual to assert his constitutional privilege against self-incrimination. You're kind of crowding it. I understand Just a that. little bit. And just a little bit more, and we're going to cut you off. Admiral, is it uh, your intent to exercise that uh, Fifth Amendment privilege under, uh, in reply to all the questions we might ask you? That is correct, Mr. Chairman. Well, I don't want you to get sunburned there. You write this, uh, this big script, and uh, you play it to the hilt, and, uh, and now you indicate to the committee that we're creating the spectacle. Well, sir, you have. May I respond, Mr. Chairman, briefly? No, I'm tired of hearing from you. Now a local report about testing for AIDS. As you know, the federal government is suggesting millions of Americans who receive blood transfusions be tested for the AIDS virus. However, as Kevin Wallerman reports, doctors say you should listen carefully to the news reports before calling your clinic or hospital. It's a sign how serious the AIDS issue is becoming, how it's hitting home. Now a call from federal health officials that millions who've received blood transfusions in this country between 1977 and 1985 could possibly be carrying AIDS without even knowing it. But the message from doctors in the Fargo-Moorhead area is don't panic, because at high risk are those people who received multiple transfusions in high-risk regions on the east and west coasts. But if you would feel more comfortable getting the AIDS test, talk to your doctor. I think, again, it, it's a word to the wise. Uh, be educated, but don't uh, get overly excited about it. Uh, if you have had multiple transfusions, have lived uh, in one of the cities that I mentioned, uh, then it would probably be wise to get checked. If you feel you need the AIDS test, state health department offices around the state can give you the test free. But the fact is, there are thousands of blood transfusions every year, and state offices could go broke giving everyone a test. Also, United Blood Services in Fargo say they will only give an AIDS test if a patient's physician recommends it. United Blood Services Director Perry Halford says a center like this is not equipped to handle an influx of people right now. While the state and United Blood Services do not want to deter testing, they want you to know this. We have checked uh, 75,000 units of blood since 1985 for the AIDS virus. And to this day, we have not uh, yet found a confirmed positive test. So uh, from that standpoint, I think we have a very, very safe supply of blood in the region. So if you've had a blood transfusion, you are no doubt wondering what to do now. One doctor told us in medicine, there are no definite yes or no answers. It's a matter of odds. And the overwhelming odds are you are not carrying the AIDS virus. Kevin Wallivan, New Center 6. If you are Irish, this is your day to celebrate, of course. In just a moment, we'll tell you why this St. Patrick's Day is even more special for a Crookston woman. That report and more news after this for Hornbacher's and Knox Music Center. It really sounds like a grand piano, and it even feels like a grand piano, but it sure doesn't look like a grand piano. That's right, because this is the exciting new Yamaha Clavinova. If you're looking for an instrument in a small package, but with a grand sound and a grand touch, but without a grand price, then the Yamaha Clavinova is the answer for you. Some models start as low as $1,295. So see the Yamaha Clavinova now at Knox Music Center, West Acres in Fargo. Through Tuesday from our seafood shop, new to Hornbacher's, imported from Chile, skinless fillets, Gold King Cliff, $3.49 a pound, and California Naval Oranges, a five-pound bag for 97 cents. Check the circular for details on manufacturer's double-value coupons. Hornbacher's, Hornbacher's, quality and saving, no 24-hour food store. Northport, Village West, and 11th and Main, Moorhead. This question tonight on the 17th day of March, where is the world's oldest St. Patrick's Day parade held? Well, if you guessed Ireland, you are wrong. The answer is New York City, today's parade number 226. And it's the largest St. Patrick's Day parade in the world, about one million people on hand today. The third largest parade in the United States is held just down the road in St. Paul, Minnesota. The wearing of the green, very popular there today. A very special St. Patrick's Day event today in Crookston, Minnesota. The folks there celebrating a century of life. Terry Doolin reports. It looks like you're
your standard St. Patrick's Day party fare with green punch and green beer, but because of the guest of honor, it is much more. It is Beth Herman's birthday. <laughs> Beth is 100 years old today on this St. Patrick's Day, and the best part about that, as far as she is concerned, is that she's Irish. When Irish eyes are smiling, sure it's like a morning spring. Do Irish people live a long time? I don't know. No, I have outlived all of ours. And she likes uh, brandy and uh, seven up once in a while and an old fashioned occasionally. And a glass of green beer once in a while. That's right. And until recently, she drove a Corvair and took college courses. A stroke a few years ago slowed her down only a little. She still loves life and her family and friends who came from around the country to be with her on her 100th birthday. What's the best part of being Irish then? Having a birthday on St. Patrick's Day. And when Irish eyes are folks in the Fargo-Moorhead area have something to celebrate tonight. This is how it looked in Bismarck.